This has always been my number one psychological fear of the ocean. We're a long way from home, a long way from help. And as we sail our yacht directly to one of Mother Nature's real life ocean aquariums. Well, this is the first time we have ever been to the outer reef. I feel somewhat ready for Ribbon Reef 10. Cod Hole, one of the world's best isolated dive sites, but sharks are prolific here. This is their home in a country with the most amount of shark attacks in the world, Australia. We have a bit of a break with one of us or someone here gets bitten by a shark. We'll just use our weight belt as a tourniquet. There's the reef. Like the waves crashing and compressing, I feel the tightness in my chest too. Just over here, he said, John. We are approaching Cod Hole and looking out for columns of coral reef. We're all good. Because if we hit one, it'd be like slamming into a brick wall. Just gonna watch, just making sure that there are no bombies just underneath us. So fear is our vital response to danger, whether it be imagined or real. Wow, this is insane. There are breakers just behind us there, as you can see. But I'm wanting to test that fear and I want to fight that primitive human emotion. So this will be our very first time swimming with actual sharks. So we've got 30 meters underneath us, which is a lot. So yeah, we're just going around a couple of times. We've just found a mooring. So we're just gonna give this one a crack. Fuck. John and I have sailed to Kana, our floating home up the entire east coast of Australia over the past three months. But this will be our first dive this far offshore. So it was a bit of a complicated mooring. So John and I have swapped. I am at the helm. We have forward, run forward. Okay, coming. With all the chaos, we almost had our first disaster. Your phone got stuck to my butt cheek and it fell down the back near the life raft. Oh, that was disastrous. We got so lucky. I actually don't know what we would have done had we not got this mooring. Better get our wetsuits on. It's exciting, exhilarating, a bit nerve wracking. It's been ringing all day long. Okay. Here we are at the cod hole. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hold it up here. Here we are at the cod hole. This is the, the outer reef. Uh, we're about 13 miles east of Lizard Island, which you might be able to see somewhere here in the distance, which is where we came from this morning. Christina's just getting geared up and we've got some friends in the water with us. Takana is parked over here on a mystery mooring. We're only going to be a little while, so thanks to everyone who's in mooring. So beautiful to see those dolphins swim past as well. So we're not sure what we're about to experience, but yeah. You know, whether there are dolphins or sharks, right? No. Rightio, let's go. Let's go. Okay. So we'll, we'll just swim around and look in the cod hole. Yeah. All right. Just just keep an eye on Takana, you know, keep looking around. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Look around in the water too. Right? Yeah, I will. All right. See ya. Oh, cool. This is a perfectly normal reaction to someone who's swimming with sharks for the very first time. And if you too feel a sense of fear, let this calm your mind and lower your heart rate. According to the Florida Museum, you are more likely to die of drowning or being involved in a car accident or even getting struck by lightning than you are of being bitten and killed by a shark. And while it still scared the bejesus out of me, it seems reef sharks are typically harmless to humans. This is the most amazing thing I have ever seen. I should mention we are also pulling along our tender. So this is a really popular way of snorkeling here in the Great Barrier Reef. So if you swim far away from your boat or you reach current, you can just jump back in that tender and make your way back to your vessel. Just look at this place. Of all our travels, this has been the most remarkable and it just goes to show when you do let fear get in the way, you miss out on these incredible opportunities. The 
reef is so large it can be seen from out of space. And these ribbon reefs stretch more than 2,000 kilometers or 1,200 miles along the coastline. This dive site we're exploring today is the most northern and it's the last of the ribbon reefs with a dive site. It stretches 90 kilometers and it's one of the longest reef chains along the outer reef. And because of its geography, the drop-offs are mind-boggling. But more of that in just a second, because we're about to make our way further offshore. I told you before, we're only in 30 meters of depth right now. We're about to make our way into 2,000 meter deep territory. That was honestly the most extraordinary thing I think I've ever seen on the water and we didn't need that weight belt for any other purpose other than keeping us below the surface of the water. Yeah, I know, it was difficult to get. Must be only useful for low tide. Perhaps. Well, we survived our first shark experience. Welcome aboard. Oh, that was beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Living on board, John and I try to be pretty self-sufficient so we conserve our water in our tanks. Like a 15 second shower is not unusual. <laughs> this is going to be freezing. Oh, it's so cold. We use the rays of the sun that land on our solar panels for energy. And this morning we managed to catch lunch. John, it's massive. Oh my God, what the heck? Although right now I'm feeling pretty bad about it because we've just been swimming with these guys all day. Oh my God, it's so big. Yeah, I know. What the heck are we going? Yeah, I got it right here. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. What it is. Oh, it looks amazing, whatever it is. In 20 minutes, we caught one job fish and two mackerel. One's fighting a lot harder. Yeah. Oh, dear Lordy. How you going there, fish monger? <laughs> Got one really big fillet off. Nice. And I want to hide his eyes <laughs> so he doesn't see. Nice. Thank you for your sacrifice, Vicky. I feel like I've been here before. Familiar with the view, the And every time that you walk through the door, I'm here by the same old side, blinded by the Getting ready to main up, utilize some of this wind. John and I are pretty emotional right now because the journey north for us has now ended. And so we're feeling a little lost and we're feeling sorry for ourselves because we're now sailing back down south, retracing our steps in some ways. But going south means we'll avoid cyclone season. And with these rare weather conditions, we're gonna go further out to sea and see if we can find the East Australian current. You might have heard of the East Australian Current on the movie Finding Nemo. I need to get to the East Australian Current, EAC. So the East Australian Current is enormous. It moves 30 million cubic metres of water every second. It basically flows from the Great Barrier Reef all the way to Tasmania. It distributes heat from the equatorial regions, moving warm tropical waters to the icy cold southern seas. It's kind of like an air conditioner. The currents essentially help even the heat of the planet so that temperate zones don't freeze up and warmer climates don't bake. So you're probably asking yourself, how is this helping us sail down south? Well, the EAC frequently flows onto the continental shelf, which is the orange part on this map. Some areas drop to 2,000 meters or six and a half thousand feet. And if we can find the sweet spot, we could do a Finding Nemo and ride a five knot current along the EAC. Grab shell, dude. Grab me. What's the depth here? The depth gauge stopped working, but the chart is telling us that it's 320 meters deep. And so we're continuing our voyage out to sea. Everyone who's been to Lizard knows that usually on the way back home, they have to be into really strong winds. So I don't know how we got so lucky with this weather. Obviously, unfortunately, we only got to spend five days in Lizard Island, but we just had to take this opportunity, take advantage of this weather. Gosh, that snorkeling experience on Ribbon 10 was unlike anything else I have ever seen or felt or experienced in my entire life. Yeah, pretty overwhelming. And to top off the day, the sales went up. 
We utilised that wind for as long as we could, but it was coming around onto our nose. How do you call those? Uh, it's a traveller. But like, what do you call the traveller jammers? No, might just get a little bang on, a little bang action. Alright, so we're also going to get the head sail out now. you got to give it a crack. You don't give it a crack, you don't know. We'll, we'll try with like half a heady and see how that goes. Half a heady? We're going to need it all out there. Okie dokie. Finding this EAC is proving a little difficult. So I'm in the galley making us some snacks. We're going to be having avocado and tomato on some crackers. A little something? Yeah. Oh no, so the current's running north. So we're going against the current. Well, at the moment, it would seem that way. Oh, no. Wow, the swell is quite big here. I'm holding on with your life. I guess it's not that big because the food isn't going anywhere, which is a bonus. Really? Yeah. At least it's going to be smooth and you'll have internet. Yeah, okay. But then all of a sudden... Current's starting to come around. No! It's slowly going around. Maybe we'll just stay out here then. So what does that mean? Well, it means we're getting a free ride south. You're riding it, dude! Check it out! And so, for the rest of the night, we decided to stay offshore, sailing past hundreds of individual reefs of coral. Dinner is served. Your fresh mackerel that you caught today. That Enjoy. looks pretty good. How'd you cook it? Good old egg with flour on a fry pan. Can't go wrong. In a wrap. Thank you. Welcome. Yum. I hope you like it. Throughout the night, John and I rotated night shift so we could each get some sleep. But after our insane aquarium-like diving experience earlier in the day, we instantly felt more comfortable with the idea of swimming in the coral sea. So there is not much written about Walker Reef. We're really interested to check it out. It is honestly like a swimming pool here. It oh, is, it's so cleared out of here. It's out of control. Yeah. So join us on our next episode when we explore Walker Reef. Make sure you also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the episode. And of course, a massive shout out and thank you to our Patreons who support us every single week. When you're lost in